Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to show you that how we can increase our bug bounty hunting skills as well as penetration testing or uh, cybersecurity skill by using artificial intelligence. But before going into this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I've shown you that how we can bypass 403 forbidden, then I recommend you to check that out. The link is given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen. Also, if you're new to our channel and if you don't know about our website, which is www.bepractical.tech, then I recommend you to check that out. We have awesome labs related to cybersecurity. As you can see, currently we have account takeover labs and all of these labs are based on real world scenarios and all of them are free and will always be free. So yeah, go ahead and check it out. We have awesome contents related to cybersecurity as well as web development, whether you can, where you can learn skills related to uh, web development and cybersecurity like UI UX development skill if you are into web development or like over here you can see there's a detailed explanation about server side request forgery iframe injection installing xamp in ubuntu so you, we are going to learn a lot of skills by visiting our website by uh, using the labs by making a benefit of the articles the front end challenges and many other things so yeah go ahead and check it out now let's get back to the video so the tool that we are going to use in this video is known as chat gpt so it is a recent tool that is quite amazing so let me show you what this tool is all about. So basically in one word, we can say this is that chat GPT is an artificial intelligence tool that can be used to uh, chat with a bot that is highly skilled, that is highly trained. So we can ask for many uh, interesting, interesting things and it's going to return all of it uh, very uh, amazingly. So let me show you what I mean by that. So over here, we need to type chat GPT and let's click on the first link. And let's see what this tool is capable of, right? So I'm just going to go with the try GPT over here and it requires us to log in into the application. So I have already logged in. As you can see, it is showing logout. So you can just create an account and you can just get started, right? So first of all, let us see what is the uh, you know power of this particular tool. So let's say that I want this tool to write a code for me, right? So for example, let's say that I want this tool to write a code that can be used to find factorial of a given number. Right, so I can just type, uh, write a code to find factorial of a number in Python. Or we can type anything that we want, any language that we want. Let's say in uh, C++, for example. Let's hit enter. Let's see whether this tool will be able to give us the, uh, the factorial program or not. So as you can see, it has successfully delivered the code for us, right? And this code is 100%, uh, you know, working. So it's quite, quite amazing if you think about it, right? So we can do many interesting things with this particular tool, chat GPT. Now, you can try to use your own methodology in this tool, but what I'm going to show you today is how hackers, how bug bounty hunters are using this tool to find latest exploit, to find uh, more attack surface. So let me show you. So the first way to use this tool if you are into bug bounty hunting or if you are into uh, penetration testing is to find def default credential, right? For example, let's say you come to an application that is using MySQL uh, as a as a database, right? So, or you can say you have come across an application that is using PHP my admin. You found a PHP my admin endpoint of a particular web application. Now you want to know what is the default credential of it, right? So you can just simply type it in this particular chat box and it will show you if there is any default credential of PHP my admin or any particular service that you want. Let's say I want to um, ask this tool whether there is a default credential credential of PHP my admin. Let's say what it will throw. Let's wait for a few seconds. So it is showing that the default username and password of a PHP my admin depends on how you install it uh, and your specific server setup, right? So it is giving every detail possible, right? So if you install PHP my admin using a package manager on Linux server, the default username is often root and the password is the one that you set for my SQL root password, right? So it has shown us that the username can be root and the password can be the password that has been used by setting up the MySQL server. If you come down, you'll see that if you are using phpMyAdmin as a local development environment, the default username will be root and the password is blank, right? So we got an information from here that the default username can either be root and the password can either be an empty password or it can be a password related to MySQL server, right? 
so it has given us the data now this particular tool can be used to find many default credential of the application right so let's say you have come across a web application that has some kind of let's say that that has php my admin then you can just use the tool to ask for the default credential right so this is the one way of how we can use this tool now we can also use this tool to create our own custom cyber security tools let me show you how so we can just simply type so create a python program or any uh, programming language you can use python program to uh, let's say to uh, find sql injection right and let's hit enter let's see what happens after that right so let's wait whether it's going to show us or not right so it is not creating the tool for us but instead it is showing us uh, the different thing that we can use to create the tool right so let me just uh, use anything else let's say create a python program to find cross site scripting right and let's see what whether it will give us the code or not let's just wait Right, so as you can see, it is showing here is a simple Python program that can be used to detect potential cross site scripting. Right, as you can see, it is trying to create the code for us. Right, so it has created the Python function. If you know programming a little bit, you will be able to understand what this code is currently doing. It is sending a request to the parameter and it is checking r.txt. And if there is a payload in response, it is going to detect access is detected or it will say no XSS vulnerability detected, right? So we can just copy this tool and we can use it to find vulnerabilities, right? See how cool is this, right? So without writing this code, we were able to simply generate the code by just typing it in the chat box, right? Now we can do many more things by using this tool. So we have identified two use cases of this tool if we are into bug bounty or cybersecurity. The first one is to find default credential. The second one is to find uh what you can say to find to create programs basically by just typing it out in the chat box and the third thing is you can use this tool to find or generate custom payloads right so let's say that there is an application that is only accepting uh, input strings uh, of let's say six to seven characters right now the input uh, field is what you can say is seems to be vulnerable because it is not fi filtering the dangerous character but you still need an, a payload a, a payload basically that is in between the length of six right in order to execute it on the application now let's see whether this tool can be used to create a custom payload for us in cases like this so let's say uh, create a, a cross-site scripting payload between of length let's say of length six and let's see whether it can create a custom payload for us or not so let's wait or we can just type generate okay so it is showing here is an example of short xss payload right as you can see it has shown us a simple payload and it is also showing how we can use this so this payload is injected into a website appending to a url and input will and it will execute the malicious svg element when the website is loaded by the victim right so this payload is relatively short but it can still be very dangerous if it is used in an attack so i hope that you have understood that how we can use this tool for bug bounty hunting or as well as for penetration testing if you have any doubts at any point then feel free to comment your doubts or issues in the chat section also do join our telegram channel if you want to discuss something related to cyber security as well as web development so link is displaying over here as well as you can see, uh, click on it on the description link from the youtube video right so with that being said thanks for watching